the mid lane is what I'm very interested to see, but yeah, more and importantly... there we go, Liliana respect yep. ban. Hey, Sleepy, you're not getting the Fox. And it's Superman being taken off the map, which is a very smart ban from Dark Power as well. Superman looks to be banned. Liliana, Timmy, and Max, nothing too surprising. I would say that giving over Timmy would be a gross error. That would not be something I would want to do, uh, and I also wouldn't want to give it to Allegiance. But Alice, where does she fall in all this? Wonder Woman, where does she fall in all this? So many hotly contested picks. The Xenio, the Malak. Oh, man. Sui J, there are just so many strong heroes in the pool right now. Yeah, taking off Ryoma is really smart because KO is a beast on this hero. So now Malak is open, Xenio open, Wonder Woman open, Lubu, so many solid side laners. Omen, this is going to be a very nice draft to watch play out. It is indeed Malak being picked up here as the first for Allegiance. But this still leaves a lot of great options on the side of Dark Power. Xenio coming Zenio in. Wonder no Woman. Surprise. Zenio Wonder, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is probably yep. good. I mean, Maple Wonder Woman was just a beast. Oh, yeah. Uh, those, those flanks, those rotations. Like, suddenly there's a Wonder Woman in your back line. That's the Oh, fun. they're going to actually take the Alice away. I, I and wondered if she would. Preemptive move. Yep. And this means they want to run an ADC comp or maybe a potential dive comp into Allegiance here. Because Allegiance will most likely, they need to play an ADC composition because a Assassin dive comp would not work well into a Xenio or Alice. It completely counters the composition. And Tulin being picked up as another strong mage. Ooh. And they had taken away the Violet from Hulu because we saw this guy on Violet. He was a monster. I like the decision to go for Violet. In any other situation, we would see Rocker default to a comfort pick in Morin. However, looking at the current state of the meta, it is safe to assume that Violet is still at a higher tier. So he's using that as a respect pick, not only for himself, but for his enemy. However, <laughs> the members of Dark Power oh, say, you yeah. know what? That playbook, that cookbook, it's going to be ours. We're going to take a line out of that recipe, and we're going to show you how it's done. Morin is picked up for their jungler, as well as the Wonder Woman following up Rocker, as well as Sleepy, to lock in for their team. And it's going to be Lobar and Lubu. Or Prada. L'Oreal or Prada here, potentially. <gasps> Kali is picked up. Oh, this works great. Holy, yeah, oh, this works boy. beautiful yeah, in their composition. More, Kali's going to drop her. Oh. That's for you, that's for you oh, John. No, yeah, I know, it's you. a hover. That's for you, that's for you, John. That's for you, buddy. <laughs> it's a hover. I love the homage, I love the shout out, but let's talk a little bit about this Kali pick. We've, we've mentioned ever since the latest patch dropped where she got this buff, we said, oh, she's gonna be good, oh, she's gonna be great. But it's, it's not, or it's, uh, what's the word? It's conditional, that's the word we're looking for. Conditional, conditional probability of her winning is directly proportional to the front line that she has at her disposal. This is something that you touch upon each and every oh, week. Yes. With the roster that they have, they have the protection of the Alice, which by and large helps a backline DPS threat such as Akali. But more importantly, what better frontline brawlers can you have than someone with a Xenial and a Wonder Woman on your side? It doesn't get much better than that. No. They're going to be able to present this this front line, this solid wall, and she's just going to be lobbing damage over it, ripping out the Gatling gun, taking it over <laughs> to the side of ALG. However, this does mean that ALG will be forced into some awkward situations, potentially how they respond to that ult from Kali, I think we'll say a lot here. If there's any team that's going to have the mobility, the foresight, the jukes to bring it over to Dark Power, I think it'll probably be them, but I still, it's a fun, creative pick. You love to... <gasps> Wow. 71%. Wow. So the power of the Twitch chat okay. believes in dark power. We're getting onto the Antares Battlefield right now. Players are locked, loaded, and ready to fire. It's the championship finals for week number four of the Valor Series. Allegiance versus dark power. This is it. Your grand finals as both of these teams are going to come out swinging. Look to start to build some momentum here in this series. The aggressive push coming in here from Allegiance already and dark power is going to stymie this threat from the get-go. No buff for you, good sir. We're going to take this ourselves. Yeah, and look at Dave. He's already winning the trade against Sleepy. Half health to Tulin already, getting level two and then winning the lane pressure trade. Sleepy now has to play defensively. Man, this guy and Kali, the reason why Kali's so good is her auto attacks do magic pierce damage. So she can actually take towers pretty well if you leave the mid lane open against her. So that's something they gotta watch out for. And Kali is one of the best mages in the late game. Her grievance summons 55 waves of total damage, like a Gatling gun of wraiths flying at you from far range. And she outranges everyone with that ultimate. And I love just the cool addition they did to her, her vision. So she pull, her vi camera pulls out even further 
healer, so she's just able to lob this damage in from insane range already. This is what we like to see. But of course, Allegiance is not going to just try. You know, let that happen. They're not going to be content to just take that damage. They are going to try and go in and aggress as best they can. But of course, Rocker, he's like, I can do poke damage too. Yeah, and look at that steal. <laughs> Sleepy actually steals a little jungle monster away from uh, Huhu there. And that was just a nice setup there. But Dave also predicted that they would be there. So there's a lot of studying of, of these teams here. Dave is basically new they're there dropped his uh, Incorporal, which is a circle that slows. So if that's combined, well, you see that circle there? If that's combined with Alice's ultimate, Hissy Fit, double circle, and then Dave ultimate, he can delete an entire team because the Hissy Fit reduces magic defense by 50% yeah, for Alice. That's a, a, something to be watched for, for sure. Don't stand in the circles is, of course, the good rule. But we have Allegiance picking up this first Abyssal Dragon here. Not going to let Dark Power get any momentum in the early game. I like this from Allegiance. We're seeing a very fun combination of them respecting their opponents, but also still wanting to play their game here as they are going in. That is going to be the Spirit going over the way to Dark Power here, who's now in full retreat. Nice, knocking him back. The stun, the follow-up is there. To, oh, we do have Omen actually committing wow. to this. There's the ult from Kali, the follow-up, the Malleus. KO is now the one in trouble. The counter engages going in as Rest and Sleep here, trying to get him out of their nice shield, trying to survive, trying to sustain. That is the sunshine, though, and it is not going to be a kill there. So nice disengage from Allegiance, a full commitment for Dark Power. Yeah, you can see where Kali, when she casts Grievance, that ult Ultimate, you have to back off. Taking the full brunt of that damage is just too much. And it was a perfect location to out within that narrow corridor, uh, which means that KO had to back off. However, Elise did a good job invading and trading and taking the blue side of the jungle away from Dark Power, which now puts them in a slightly smaller lead, 500 gold, but Dark Power is still holding their own. And one thing we've seen Allegiance do on occasion is draft rather more mm, entertaining compositions, I guess you could say. They've been known to, on occasion, maybe cheese a little bit. But in this situation, they are playing this straight up right now. They just saw what Dark Power did to Immortals. And I have to love the fact that both of these teams are saying, we're going to come into this, we're going to play our best. And may the, may the best man win. Yeah, may the best team win. But the next objective is spawning, the Abyssal Dragon. You take that dragon, it gives your team a lot, your team Team-wide gold and experience. So that objective is going to be really important. You see the bottom side of the map here where Malik and Rocker is. MTS, that dragon side, they're posturing. Allegiance is exerting map dominance on this side because they're saying this dragon is mine. It's my territory. But look, both teams are playing so safe. Omen's staying in a bush. He doesn't know where KO is. Oh, they're trying to get... He missed the ult. He missed the combo there. Who missed the combo? And as a result, they lose tower and they are not able to trade towers. That was actually huge there. A slight misplay there from Huhu and just great reaction time coming in from Allegiance as we do have that pressure there. We have Maple falling as well. This is a solid play coming out from Allegiance. They are getting value across the map right now. They are trading out. Neo is trying to defend this, but Alice not exactly the best person to do so, as we do have a tower being taken in the top as well as a kill. So trading out somewhat here, but still going in favor of Allegiance. Yeah, they trade one tower, but Allegiance gets two towers, and they trade a kill on each side, which now puts Allegiance in a nice 1k gold lead. They're also going to take the Dragon, and that's going to give them even more gold and experience. And now Dark Power. They need to get picks. They need to get a solid rotation here because if they don't, they're going to continue to fall behind. But you can see how good both teams are. It's only 1-1 one, one, it's 5 minutes. Are we playing an NA or what? Because if it's 1 minute, uh, if it's 5 minutes in the game, right, and you think about it, and there's only one kill, I mean, both teams are playing very cautious. They're not giving over unnecessary deaths. And that's something that I noticed both teams are playing much better because NA normally has a lot more kills on average than than EU, and that's something that we notice as the game develops and new players play. They normally give a lot more deaths over because they don't know how to juggle aggro or know how to anticipate enemy actions and rotations. Yeah, for sure. We're having a, a slight technical issue as we we come back. It's just a little problem. Blip there. What's uh, what's the finals without some added suspense and excitement? But we've got a little bit of uh, data to talk about and consider. Let's. Look at where we stand right now. We're not too far in the game, but trading of objectives is something that both of these teams always are having to make a conscious decision of. Sweejay, you mentioned it was one of your last points uh, before we kick back to the desk. 
Allegiance coming out on top thus far. Yeah, KO did a really good job in top lane. When you see the rotation from Dark Power, who who comes in, he actually drops like Magnetic Storm from Morn. So this round Magnetic Storm had dropped, and then he used Impact Barrage, but KO dodged it. If you get knocked into the Magnetic Storm by Morn, you will get stunned, and that would have killed KO immediately. And then they were able to then trade two towers. However, they only took one tower, while Allegiance on the other side of the map took two towers because they were able to get their kill and push down both towers. It was, I mean, if it had come through, it would have been a solid play. That's what they needed. They still traded okay. They did end up getting the kill in the end and getting the tower, but ALG was very much so coming out on top there. Now, let's take a look forward. Uh, let's take a look at where we're wanting both of these teams to go. Allegiance clearly on top with the objective lead and the control, especially when you start taking the outer ring of or the outer ring of towers earlier in the, or in the earlier stages of the game. You have the ability to push your minion waves a little deeper, get a little bit better cross map pressure. What are some things that Dark Power can do at the current moment as we get loaded back up into the game? to potentially even this out and find themselves in a more standard standing against uh, Allegiance. They need to rotate together as a four-man unit, take their jungle as soon as it spawns, and not give it anything over to Allegiance, so they basically don't get snowballed, keep the level and the gold disparity constant, so you don't, you don't lose use, lose that lead even more. And let Kali scale up, because Kali in the late game and more in late game can do a lot of work against the competition they have. And if they play around with the Kali Alice ultimate, they're able to get some picks and combo and win some key fights. So all they need is one good Kali ultimate. It can delete the whole team when they're under the Alice ultimate. Well, it once Alice and Kali get frosties. Oh yeah, that's that slows for days. It's like a root. It's not basically really a, slow. a root. It's not even a root at that. It's yeah. It's, it's <laughs> not even a slow at that point. It's a root, and it's even combine that with the hissy fit with everything going into this. Uh, you get the additional magic damage coming in. I love that synergy. And again, it makes so much sense when you look at it because both of these teams, Alice is such a highly contested pick. We've seen the power that both of these supports have with this hero. But when you combine it with something like a Kali, it's such a natural synergy. The additional additional movement speed, which of course. Gives Kali that additional movement speed, which you can use then to keep ahead of her opponents and line up all uh, that grievance as well. Combine that with the stun, with the slow, with the additional magic damage. It's it's a match made in heaven. Now, yeah. the next question that I have for you revolves around if this game gets to the later stages of the game. Because of the decisive two victories that we saw coming out of Dark Power in the semifinals, we haven't seen really an extreme extraordinarily late game team fight coming out of them. We've seen some split team fights. You clearly have the back door and things of that effect, but seeing their composition, seeing how they line up as we get back into the game. Hey! You know what? Forget that point. We want the action. We want the excitement. I'm going to throw it back to these fine gentlemen. Let's get it underway. Woo. Well, welcome back, everybody. We are here with the game as Allegiance is still sitting up now. Only about a 2K, uh, 2K gold lead, 6-4. to four. So still not out of this yet by any means. Look at the speed. That's what I'm talking about. Look at how much damage Kali's going to be able to do once that starts to stack up and get even further here into this game as Uhu and crew are pushing in here. But look at the impact that's going in. Uhu is the prime target. They're trying to extricate themselves from the situation, but the chase is real onto the Morn. He is going to fall there. Nicely done. The shock is there. And Omen is standing in the back line, not able to get his team out. And now he's caught far too deep behind enemy lines. And that is going to be a full route as Dark Power is in retreat. Yeah, and they won the fight when... Dark Power has the Dark Slayer buff. You see that circular, that, that yellow circle around the bottom of the team. That's a 30% damage app, and they still lost the fight. That just shows how strong and how dominant of a team Allegiance is and how decisive they are with their engages. Yeah, for sure. This is the Allegiance we know and love. They are, again, a veteran squad. They stay composed. They identify their key targets, and they execute them. And they are now pushing in onto this top, at this high ground here. They're trying to execute the tower, and they're executing Neo. Oh, oh no! Going in so deep here, and that is KO caught out though. But look at the damage they're doing, and look at the damage in return. Sleepy with the intro. Oh man, able to survive so that as well. You do have Maple going in with the lasso. The brace and the submission are there, trying to secure these additional kills. But ALG very smartly getting out. They wanted the tower, but they'll be happy with what they got. Yeah, they definitely will be happy there. And that was a good push by ALG. And look at Maple getting the kill onto Rocker. MTS is now going aggressive onto Maple. And however, is Dave going to be able to help him out here and save his life? And he might be able to. Ooh, I may have spoke too soon. It looks like uh, ALG decided it was time to take a little mini vacation. They like the forest too, guys. They're deciding to hang out in the jungle here, but they maybe overstate that welcome as they are now giving up kills wow. left and right. Look at the slow coming in as well. And that is the power of that Kali in that situation, able to just put that down, lock him in place. You add the Alice into the effect and... Yeah, look at that Kali lifesteal. She has 
So she was able to lifesteal and get that back. She has all her magi, enchanted boots, and Hikari is giving so much pierce. And once she gets Rhea's blessing and more damage, ability power, that Kali is going to be able to carry so much. Oh yeah, for sure. And if you look at the gold difference here too, Allegiance really not all that far ahead. Dark Power has been able to do pretty well here, and they have not yet lost a high ground turret. That is crucial here for this team, so the super minions will not be spawning, which of course is additional pressure that you always have to deal with. And if I look back across the other side of Allegiance, if Dark Power can get a decent, if they can get a dragon, get a couple kills, start to get some structures going, they're going to turn this gold lead on its head. Yeah, they got to focus Dave, because Dave is the hyper carry now with the amount of damage that he has. And look Rocker, he's gonna get eliminated! Neo being the bait there, masterfully executed for the side of Dark Power here as they were able to force the Violet in, thinking she could get the kill there on to Alice, and no, and that is Dark Power grabbing that dragon here. This is huge for them. This is gonna give them an opening, the opportunity that they needed. If they can get one or two more kills here, you start to roll some structures. Dark Power is gonna find themselves in the lead, but they need to be careful because KO is going in, looking to initiate. Look at the Earth Splitter is in. Maple's in full retreat. Who trying to get himself out of there? The speed is there. Nice stun on the KO to disengage as the side of Dark Power is in full retreat, forcing a lead into the meat grinder that is Kali. Yeah, and look at this. They got a jump on Sleepy, and looks like Sleepy might not be able to make this out alive. However, they're aging the backline. KO gets on the backline. They try to they kill Hu Hu, and looks like they're trying to get on Dave here. And Omen is going to jump out, and looks like he's going to get caught out by the side of AOG 4v3. He is able to get out there with that Angelic Splitter. The four man stunned the follow up from Maple there as well. Rest not hitting anyone with that Earth Splitter. Oh man, Neo, the plays for days going in there. But Rocker has rejoined the fray, trying to target Maple here. The tower all the while is being destroyed, KO finding value across the battlefield here. If we can't get the kills, we'll just get the structures. And what a back and forth trade. Both of these teams playing at the top of their game. Yeah, it's just going back and forth right now. It's amazing to see how decisive they are, how they're juggling error, going in, going out. Both these teams are just showing off the mechanical props. Rocker being able to survive and do so much damage in the back line. And then we see Kali, Dave, using that grievance to do so much damage from, from far back, forcing AO to back off and disengaging. And this is going to come down to who is going to execute their composition better. Who is going to keep who alive, Dave alive, and is Sleepy or Rocker. Those are the key carries on each side here. Who's going to do more damage and who's going to survive these engages? I think a lot of it's going to come down to this Malak. We saw in that last fight the ability to counter engage, the counter dive onto the back line. We now have Rocker gonna start to line up some big old crits as we push in here onto this top. Look at both of these carries reaching points where they can start to hit like trucks. As we get here, 12 kills to 10, but everyone's starting to come online. Yeah, look how careful the whole team plays. They 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 basically try to camp in the bushes and get a pick, and they're trying to go get on this Alice here. MT misses his misses the Malik ultimate, and Dave is able to rain fire using the grievance there, and now they're gonna back off and just face. Wow, look at the poke from Uhu. Oh no, that is him actually dropping there. That is the target prioritization. Rest is now probably gonna fall here as well. No, able to flick over the wall. Nice sustainability. We have KO looking to go in onto Dave in the back line as well, spreading the fight beautifully. It's inside of ALG, and it is somehow, some way, Maple going to fall and Rocker surviving. Look at the veteran status, the calm, cool, collected nature of Allegiance as they are pushing in here. What a beautiful fight from them as they are looking going towards the core here. And I think that is likely going to be GG. They are going in here onto the core. It has backdrop protection, but the minions are going to arrive. And with that, Allegiance is going to take game number one, a close back and forth match. But in the end, they take the win. came in with the momentum of a speeding train, but it was the super speed train of Allegiance that showed up in big strength there, securing themselves a 15 minute victory over Dark Power. Now, we can talk all day about how this is just yet another showing that you have from Allegiance. However, again, Dark Power did show that they can battle with it. 
they were just missing a couple pieces to the puzzle. Yeah, both teams played so decisively, but Legion just came out because of the damage. Rocker is just playing out of his mind with Violet. You can see why Morn is not played in other regions. Only in North America is he played. Violet completely outranged him. You saw that last fight. She poked him twice and he just got deleted. And beautiful plays by the side of AOG. Like I said, Sleepy versus Dave, and Sleepy was able to carry his team to victory. The college is never quite able to, still pulling up 38 almost percent of the team's damage, but just wasn't quite able to do because it's not that big boom, blow them up kind of damage. It's sustained, it's over time, and they are able to recover, reset in these fights. We call it effective damage. It was a lot of damage on paper, but it wasn't effective in the sense that it wasn't necessarily securing those kills. It was good buttering up of the other team before the fight started, but they didn't have the exclamation point. They didn't have that, that the gavel coming down, the sentence of judgment on the opposing team to secure those kills. Still a great back and forth match, a lot of awesome team fights all around, but a couple slightly, I don't even want to say out of position, just really well position engages from allegiance for what took the win in the end yeah i think it was less on the overall missteps of dark power and more of an assertion of dominance and like you said that prime positioning coming from allegiance they positioned themselves in a lot of these team fights in the most ideal perfect situations the team fight positionings that every team believes in hopes that they can attain at some point or another and dark power as a result just weren't able to react in the ways that they needed. Yeah, they need to basically engage with Kali's ultimate grievance. It does so much damage, it forces AOG to back off and then wait for it to then come back. Because once you hit grievance on the enemy team, you're gonna do so much damage. But I never saw an Alice ultimate come out with that grievance combo. And Alice Neo actually got caught out. He got basically bush camped, engaged on, and they had to waste their abilities and even Malik actually missed his, his huge stun onto the Alice. And as a result, though, AOG was able to get the damage lead every time. They always initiated first, and as a result, they won most, most of these key fights. I think a lot of it, too, came down to the fact that Hissy Fit was constantly having to be used in a defensive posture. So Malik would jump in onto the back line. You'd throw everything down to try and kill him to stop them from destroying your back line. But then also you're not being the aggressors. You're not being offensive. And in a lot of situations, they went in, the big stun came in, they were able to dodge it. But at the same time, Zeniel had already ulted and now Zeniel has dropped down. In the midst of all the enemies, his team is already backed up. I think sometimes he was maybe just a little bit too trigger happy, thinking his team was going to get caught out, not trusting that the team was going to be competent enough to extricate themselves from that situation and save their own skins in that case, because then he found himself caught out and they had to blow even more resources to save Zeniel. It's like, wait. Yeah. Well, there's one game standing in between Allegiance and a third straight victory, which will have them three of the four weeks. It's going to take another game for them to win then. But you can win right now. How's that going to happen? Arcana giveaway, courtesy of the lovely developers of Arena of Valor, Tencent Games. We have codes for both Europe and North America. Now, reminder, you get one or the other because it's where you live. So if you live in North America, use the North America code. If you live in Europe, use the Europe code. I think to safe say it's pretty much common sense. You know, do whichever you want. 25 chances to win before those codes expire. So make sure you, you know, log into your application and get that figured out. Should be pretty quick, pretty simple. But gentlemen, the real question becomes, now as we get players loaded into lobbies and get the pick ban phase for game number two started, Dark Power now has the option to secure themselves a first pick on blue side. What do you feel is the priority, seeing of how they acted in the last game? Yeah, I would like to see who on Violet. I feel like his Morn was not as strong. You know, missed a few key sh shots. And also, Morn's just not good. No no offense to Morn, but he's only worse okay. in, in North America. <laughs> he's not meta in SEA or EU. And he's a, he's a hero that gets outshined by Lindis, by Violet, by Slims. So I'd love to see who on a different hyper carry, because I think that'll make a big difference. I also think a big factor here might be the Malak. Those abilities, those shocks that come in, totally reset the face of a team fight. If they land, if you can get value on that, that could be a huge factor here as well. We'll see what the teams opt to go for here. Dark Power back against the wall. The Dark Horse, they have already come so far. They want to take it to game number three. Malik looks like to be hovered as that first ban. Now, another hero that we have to take into consideration wholeheartedly falls on that Liliana. We saw it banned away 
clearly in the first game. We need to take a look and see if that becomes a priority or if one of these teams are going to be worth giving it up. Eh, nope, that's not going to happen. Max being taken away, and then Liliana first by Allegiance. Yeah, now we are going to look at the Superman ban, probably by the side of Allegiance here. Teamy is going to be... Oh, Superman's going to be taken off by Dark Power instead. So I can see Allegiance potentially banning away... Um, Violet as well, in addition to Superman, with Malik being taken off the table. You know, Teamy's gonna be banned by them. Now, like, who's gonna ban Superman here? And Violet is gonna be open, and I wonder if Dark Power will take that Violet first pick or opt for something different. I mean, why would they ban Superman, though? Maybe they don't play it. That's probably why. It's probably why, but, like, at this stage in the game, Superman has been out for long enough in North America that you should play the Man of Steel. You should play Superman. Mr. Kent needs to show up and be in your arsenal Ooh. at this stage. But Zenial's denied. Ryoma. First picked. Ryoma has been essentially taken off the board almost, if not every single game here in North America. That is not a hero that these North American players want to keep open. However, that goes into the hands of Dark Power. But what does Allegiance get on the rebuttal? It's going to be Alice as well as a solid foundational sideliner or side laner in that Wonder Woman. Yeah, what they can pick here though, yeah, Tulin along with Violet would be a great pick up here. Just deny the Violet, play Violet into the Alice because Violet can just out poke and just keep her distance safely. But instead, they're going to offer the Omen, which is going to give the Violet over to Allegiance. But will Rocker maybe try out his Morn here? Who knows? But Violet looks like a really good pickup along with Prado. Oh. Oh, Zephys. Okay. Wow. All right, so maybe more of an aggressive comp coming in here for the side of Allegiance. Hey, we can beat you with a traditional ADC. We can beat you with Assassin as well. Going to try and mix it up here and not allow Dark Power to get a read on them. Also gives them an opportunity to flex their muscles a little bit, flex that draft prowess. Yeah. However, they still have themselves an option potentially here. Yeah, Violet Thane looks really good or some type of carry. They need a support though. So uh, if they play Zephy since it is comp, they're going to lose because it's a dive comp into an Alice composition. And Prada is so good at counter diving and Wonder Woman as well. And they're going to go ahead and do that. So they need to win the early game extremely hard with Ryoma here, along with Tulin and Omen. And Kilgroth, oh my goodness, that's such a good counter. Allegiance clearly wins this draft. You made a point in Virum earlier today that teams that put themselves on a timer is sort of a question mark. It's something that you either have to great success or you fall down the tunnel and you're not able to recover yourself. Very high risk, high reward. Dark Power has asserted their dominance. They have earned their spot here in the finals. Now the question becomes, and I propose it to you, does placing themselves on a timer that revolves around the early game, does that bode well for them? It's a no-win scenario. And here's why. So one of two situations happen, especially if you're the team who is the, the lesser seed the team or, the, or in that position. So either you you draft for early game domination. You say we're going to go out, we're going to win this. However, we don't build a, we didn't build a composition that scales very well. And either you win that right at the way, or you're absolutely guaranteed to lose. Or you say we'll draft for the better late game. However, we need to not get so far behind early that we just die. They're, both of those situations offers risk. It's just which risk are you willing to take? Yeah. Sweet Jay? I think <laughs> Allegiance has such a good draft that counters the draft of Dark Power, and Allegiance is going to take this game pretty pretty easy. Well, despite the momentum that Dark Power created at the beginning of this series, it looks like both of my casters are a little on the wary side. We're going to have to find out exactly if that happens. Allegiance, one win away from the three-peat. Is it going to be the victory, or will Dark Power send us to a game number three? In Virum, Suijay, you have the call. Let's see here if my hype, my trust in Dark Power will be rewarded, or if Allegiance will show that in the end, maturity and keeping a cool head goes a long way here in these games. We'll see if they're the ones who are going to come out on top, or if somehow, some way, Dark Power can find a way to rally that Dark Power and take it to game Number three, Sui J looking at this composition. Walk us through why exactly this is going to struggle. Yeah, because in the late game, when Kilgroth gets his items, he has Gorlord, which makes him immune to CC. And this is a composition that wants to dive on top of everyone. So Zephys, Ryoma, they're all melee, along with Omen, melee, Tulin, kind of a close mage as well. He has some poke. But they're going to be on top of the Kilroth, and Kilroth is going to do work. And you can see here, Omen has got the bird on that side, and MTS got the bird on the top lane. And look at this here. 
Um, yeah, already we see Wonder Woman chasing this down to look for the kill here as well. Omen getting so low. Omen is almost out. Neo is trying to peel for the team. KO almost finding it here. A little bit of actually counter synergy there. Sleepy knocking him out of that. That was actually a huge misstep. Now KO is the one in forward tree. The heal's going to come in as well. But that poison gas bomb actually knocked him out of the last. So an uncharacteristic, complete counter synergistic misplay yeah. for the side of Allegiance. And yeah. I can't believe he just lived. That poison gas bomb pushed him away and it saved Omen's life. He should have poisoned Gaspon on top of him and slowed him instead of knocking him away. So that was a calculated misplay by Sleepy there. And now it looks like Dark Power was able to turn that around when it was looking pretty bad for them. That was a gift. They need to take it with both hands and they need to run with it because at this stage, they need all the small advantages they can get if they have a hope of taking this over Allegiance. But of course, Allegiance now maybe a little feeling a little bit flustered off of that, and maybe that might actually be the the little advantage that Dark Power needs here up in the top lane. Though MTS has decided he just wants to kill Maple, and now's the time. Yeah, MTS is winning his side lane really hard, so he's doing such a good job of defeating the Omen one v one with Lagoon. Look at this play by Dave getting a kill on Sleepy in the mid lane. That was absolutely huge, pushing into the jungle, forcing it, taking it to Allegiance here. It's now Rocker is trying to stand, but Neo and Dave. Neo being the one his team needs right now and going off here for the side of Dark yeah, Power. Yeah, Neo and Dave are just playing together so well. I mean, they just beat Sleepy and Rest, who are the probably the best combo in the mid lane. Those were just amazing plays there by the side of Dave and Neo. And as a result, they get the Dr Abyssal Dragon, which gives them a nice 1k plus gold lead. Converting kills into objectives, the mark of a good team in Arena of Valor. Getting kills is great, but what are you able to do with it? How do you convert this? How do you make this have an impact on the battlefield? And this is what we're seeing here with Dark Power, able to get that dragon, getting that additional experience, getting that additional gold, further propelling them into this mid game going up against the Legions. And their mid game is actually with the Omen, with the Ryoma, it's quite strong. Yeah, I mean, look at Dave. He's getting fed. He's level six already ahead of Sleepy. Let's see if he's level four. I mean, look at the gold on him. And he used that perf that Thunderbird perfectly. He Thunderbirded and killed him. And then Alice got hit by it. It does 30% damage of your missing health. So that's why he's able to kill Alice after killing Sleepy so fast. And it recharges his passive Thunderclaps, which is those five boats that swing around him and hits and prioritizes enemy heroes next to him. Yes, indeed. And Ryoma barely missing the Wailing Blade there in the mid. That might have been a kill there. The team has been in position trying to set up for that. And speaking of setting up, the Dragon is going to spawn again shortly. And already Dark Power looking towards the side of the map. And Omen is going to join this fray here. It might be a 5v5 scrap here over the Dragon. Both these teams coming out. Game number two, they're going to look to brawl. Yeah, that Dragon's going to be respawning in about 40 seconds here. But look at Dark Power exerting dominance on the map. But they jumped onto Maple. And look at the collapse from Dark Dark Power, what a nice play. And look at the damage and the CC onto MTS. He gets knocked down. The bait coming in, stepping up way too far in the mid lane was that omen. And now, when the second Allegiance tries to capitalize on that, somehow Dark Power is able to exploit that overextension. Allegiance with a surprising lack of map awareness, tunnel visioning in onto that hero there. And now an aggressive invade coming in is actually who's stealing that. A nice spectral ire as well under Rocker, half healthing him now. And this is going to be huge. All of this additional damage or initial damage, I should say, setting up, buttering up the side of Allegiance yeah, that was a huge factor in this dragon. That was a huge combo there. Lumber landing the Earth Splitter onto MTS there, and he got caught out. And the, how they kite the fight, they're doing such a good job and not feeding the deaths. And look at the dragon here. AOG is going to rush it. Is Dark Power going to respawn? The top lane, though, they're already getting a kill. They're diving under a tower. They're getting value elsewhere here as well. And they're going to be able to pick up MTS. They're trading up for the dragon, though. That might not necessarily be worth it here. Neo, nice dodge there onto that. Beautifully executed. Allegiance does get the dragon, but a tower and a kill probably going the way here for Dark Power. Yeah, the mechanics are just playing off against this. And look at that. Look at how the rotation are happening. They are now trading. Allegiance is like, okay, you can take Dark Tower. We got dragon, but now we're also going to take your bomb tower. And Dark Power is not going to be able to rotate in time, or are they? They might. They're going to look to go in here. I don't think it's going to be in time to save this tower, but it might be in time to fight. Instantly backing up his Allegiance. Get the objective. Back up. Retreat. Reset. This is the mark, again, of a mature team as they are going in here. But now the Dark Slayer has spawned. This will be another point of contention, another objective here on the battlefield. It is Allegiance now on the back step as Dark Power is looking to push in, looking to set up some play here. They want to get some kills there. Five to zero right now. They are looking so solid. They're going in. They found rest. That is the Earth Splitter. They're going in, identifying the Alice as the priority target. Now Neo is stepping.
step way too far forward. The poison gas bomb, the damage onto Neo. The team was not in position. Zephyrus wasn't there. That was not the fight they wanted to take. Yeah, that was a 3v4, but they had a nice engage onto Sleepy. But Neo went too far and it fell. But now Huhu is going to take that tower potentially here, and now they're just going to back off. But no, the tower does not fall. The Siege minion does not focus the tower, but instead it's trying to try to help you. And look at Sleepy here. He's getting low, but Dark Omen is only going to be able to clean this up. He's not able to, and Sleepy used Poison Guys to jump away. And look at Ali just collapsing on to Dark Power. The, the steps there. I mean, Huhu dodging basically every skill shot that KO had to throw at him there. Uh, that was uh, dancing with the devil at any moment there. That was almost death for members of Allegiance and Dark Power in equal measure there. Some really great individual plays coming out. These guys are all going off right now. They are playing in the finals, and they are showing it here. Every single one wants to be the playmaker their team needs and deserves. Yeah, and look at day 4-0-1 in his student, but he's got to rotate with his team. They have to play better as a unit. They were ahead, and now Allegiance is just catching back up and they can't do that. They had the aggressive plays. They were the ones invading jungle. They were the ones exerting more territorial control over the map. But because of their lack of rotation as four man and allowing an uneven trade where Legion's able is to collapse on the 4v3, that's not helping them. And they need to keep this up. They need to fight together and they have a chance to secure the game against Allegiance here. Dark Power have the ability to team fight as a very cohesive unit. They can put together some amazing combos. They have this natural synergy. They're, they're going off right now. They're feeling it, but they just need, as you said, to be together as a team. And that's what we saw when they went into the jungle. I was like, great, they're going to get this pick. They're going to go in. But all of a sudden, Zephyrus is back in the bottom lane, and I'm slightly confused as to why they're still choosing to initiate. Yeah, Maple did such a good job there, just blinking away there, using his escape to, sa to be safe. And now they're going to get another tower here. Look at this four-man rotation. And then Dark... Uh, Allegiance will trade the top tower, however. Dark Slayer, Dark Slayer, forget the tower, they're saying. They're going to go and try and pick this up here as well. They're identifying the fact that Dark Power is not in position. Sleepy's going to force the back here, but Maple is going to look to try and pull out another six steals. KO is going to drop as well. Maple is in the thick of this. He's in the fray. Can he do it? No! Beautifully done. Beautifully timed, but it is a high ground tower. No, they're just going to look to end the game. Are they just going to go in right now? Okay, the entire side of Allegiance needs to try and back up as Dark Power is pushing it onto the core. They're going to try and make this happen. They're going in. They're diving onto the Prada as well. They're attacking the core. Look at the damage coming in. They're trying to do do this to me, Jake. Do they have the damage? The minions are dying. The prey to damage is there. No, they cannot do this. They are forced now to retreat. A risky, gutsy play from Dark Power doesn't pay off. Pay off, but they they have helped the core. Yeah, you know what? You saw what Sleepy did. Sleepy used the poison gas ball and pushed the siege minion away. If he did not do that, they probably would have lost the game. You saw how much damage they did to core with the minion barely being there. And if Sleepy did not push that minion away, that would have been GG. So what a crazy play by Sleepy, but also risky. But a high reward play by Dark Power that did not play out in their favor. They gave up a couple kills, but they didn't even lose a tower for it. I'm not even sure it was that risky. They took that high ground tower through all of that. Dark Power showing that when push comes to shove, they can shove. Taking any advantage they are given, take what is offered. Dark Power, that they are given an opportunity, they will run with it. Yeah, I mean, look at the play. Look, they're rocking on Rocker, but can they kill him? Maple is going to get caught and get destroyed here, and he falls, and AOG with this rotation takes top tower and a kill. The power of the consummate five-man rotation. However, through all of this, Zephyrus, Rioma, putting pressure here throughout the map, focusing on this weakened lane. Allegiance is going to have to worry about this all game long, but Dave's going to have to worry about existing at all in this moment. It just, okay, no, he's dead. Yeah, that was such a beautiful, he turned on, Sleepy turned on Disciple the Plague, and he landed the Poison Gas Bomb. When he's in that ultimate form, the Poison Gas Bomb sends spikes, and it stunned him, it stunned Dave, and because of that play from Sleepy, they were able to lock him down and kill him, and they're just catching off the members of Dark Power here, and they cannot do this, they gotta be very careful, and that was a bad ultimate by Neo. However, Omen is caught in the back line, and he's gonna fall. He's gonna fall, that was actually a huge misstep, that was a complete whiff onto that Earth Splitter there. We saw them trying to get pressure in the top lane, Ryoma went up, and Zephyrus went up, not quite able to get themselves out of there. I feel like Dark Power may be feeling the, the pressure's getting them at this stage because Allegiance is pushing in. They've got the minions here. They're going to try to do the damage. They have the initial kills. They have the setup here. They are wanting to push in. They actually want to end this game themselves. Maple is getting chunked. He is going to fall. The damage is not there. Who who's going to drop? Rocker is going off. And this is Allegiance looking strong here. The minions have fallen. However, they cannot take this high ground tower. So Dark Power will hold for now. They have that high ground. Yeah, that was so decisive from AOG there. They're able to get two kills and then give one death over because Rocker had to sacrifice 
They didn't get a tower though, and they got so low, and now Dark Power needs to take retake map control. Take the dragon here because they know they're low. Yes, rush the dragon, get back into the game here, and try to win the next fight because that will decide who will be the victor. Eight kills to 10, 3K, 3K gold difference here. This is such a close back and forth match right now. The towers, despite uh, overall sort of being in favor here of Allegiance, losing that high ground tower was actually massive here. This is pressure that is going to be going on all game long that somebody from Allegiance is going to have to babysit. Yeah, this is going to come down to Neo. Neo needs to land this Urza. Look at the gold advantage going over to Allegiance there. Significant gold lead now. 2,000 almost gold lead currently. But now the key is Neo needs to land a nice Lumber Ultimate. His Earth Splitter is going to be a game changer if he can land on the entire Ooh. enemy team. But AOG is constantly making these rotations and getting people caught out. So Dark Power needs to rotate as a unit more. They're kind of split across the map. And AOG is more Com communicating and moving as a unit. We know that Dark Power can team fight. We know they can compete with the best. I think in a straight 5v5 team fight at this stage in the game, we might actually see Dark Power be able to take it. They just have to be as a unit. We haven't really seen that yet. They've sort of just taken these awkward split fights. Maybe they don't think they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Allegiance, but I think in this situation, as long as they don't stack for Rocker, as long as they don't get hit in a massive brace of submission, they should be okay. They need to try and get a pick on the back of the fight. They need to use this Omen, identify a key target. If they can kill Alice to start this off, if they can lock down the Lubu or the Preda. Exactly. They can actually lock down Alice and just focus her. Omen has Death's Embrace. It's an ultimate that traps the hero inside a circle for five full seconds. And then Ryoma has a Willing Blade Stun. Zephys has a knockup, Death from above, AoE stun. Lumber has an AoE stun. And then, and then Tulin has so much AoE damage. And then when someone gets low, his Thunderbird ultimate can just shoot out and does 30% of someone's missing HP. They just need to focus one person. And that should not be Rocker. Rocker wants to be focused. He's the guy that has in a lot of life steal. His weapons has attack speed, life steal. He's super tanky. Alice, on the other hand, is not that tanky. She's building Frosty. They need to either get on the Alice or get onto Sleepy. The Prada, and they can win this fight. That's the key. If they focus Rocker, they will lose a fight because that is a win condition that Allegiant wants. Is they want you to focus the Rocker because he's the guy that has a life steal and the, the crazy attack speed that can turn around each fight. So it's can they keep their cool? You've got this huge, massive threat with a big spear coming in and chunking your front line. Your, your gut reaction is to try and focus him down, but in reality, you just need to be focusing that back line, playing to your win conditions as well. Rocker is that threat. He's that disruption, but all the while, Sleepy is going to be getting off those plate specters. He's going to be doing some of the real damage here. He needs to be a target. Alice as well, if they can get that first initial pick, Dark Power can win these fights. Yeah, Dark Power can, and look, they need to get it, but Wonder Woman's not the one going to focus. He gets ultimate on the entire enemy team. The Lumber Ultimate comes up. However, Rocker is on the back line, in the front line, getting a lot down. Omen is out of position, and he's going to get caught and killed. Nice poison gas bomb from Tippy there, able to push him out back into the fight. Hoo-hoo and crew are there, but again, not all five members are together for Dark Power. How can they be expected to take these fights? They just didn't initially get that Wailing Blade onto KO. He just walked right on through it, completely feeling content. Wonder Woman is so... Tanky, this is not who you want to fight. And now, because you chose to take an initiation without all five members while oh. the Dark Slayer is up, this is it. They need to try and go in. They need to try and snipe this. Wow. This could be a huge error. Who who instantly deleted, instantly annihilated. The Dark Slayer is going to go the way of Allegiance. This could be the misstep from Dark Power that cost them it all. As we have Neo, yeah, he's just going to earth splitter for good measure. As we have Maple and MTS fighting up here in the top lane as well, but it is going to be MTS coming out on top unless Maple can pull the full retreat, saving Private Maple as he's running for dear life. Yeah, he's got it, and that was such a misplay. Who went in too early? They should have stunned Rocker and then casted the Thunderbird Ultimate, which does 30% HP. It actually almost killed Rocker. So if they coordinate that a little better, they could have killed Rocker instantly and turned it around and take Dark Slayer. But because of that misplay by the side of Dark Power, they lost the Dark Slayer. They give up a death, and now it's looking so good for Team Allegiance. This is looking all Allegiance here as they're pushing in onto the high ground of Dark Power. They have that Dark Slayer buff. They have every advantage here as they are getting the split pressure across the map right now look at that, the hissy fit to slow the prey to damage. Hoo Hoo is trying to get that initiation, but KO is there as well. Look at Omen just getting chunked, and the pressure in the mid lane is here as well. The high ground tower is getting low. Rocker is forcing them to rotate around here. Maple Force to flick around, and that is going to be Rocker falling. Great target for the initiation is there, but David's now stepping in the front line. The two is going to be there in the back. The damage, this Thunderbolt.
Rumble, but that is not going to be enough as KO is standing strong in the front line. Rest is trying to survive through this and Spectral Iron from Hu as well. They're splitting the team as beautifully as they can. The high ground tower has fallen, but somehow, some way, Dark Power is standing, but KO is still alive. They needed to take him down. Hu is in the back, but KO, the Wonder Woman, sustaining through it all, and they are pushing in here onto the high ground. This is it. Allegiance surviving in these fights. They shouldn't have done it, but they've made it. They have done it. And Dark Power is looking so close to falling here. They are not feeling so good, Mr. Stark. And that is going to be it. GG Alliance is going to take game number two. They are going to take it in the grand finals. They are going to be your NA champion.